you remember like the very first seed of idea that eventually became Friday the 13th? Steve Miner and I and the, and the same, a lot of the same people got together and uh, decided to make a movie about soccer. And we thought that this was really going to be really special and that that was going to be our key more or less to, um, to the big time as it were. And when, uh, when we finished the film, we were having terrible trouble with the names. It was called Manny's Orphans at first. We started making lists of titles and names after names and while we were going down there, I just scribbled down Friday the 13th. You know, God damn it, if, it, if I had a film called Friday the 13th, I know how to sell that. What am I gonna do with this kid's soccer movie? Basically, what, that's what happened is we started kicking around ideas back and forth, back and forth. And um, uh, finally, I think we turned a corner um, when one day Victor said, wait a second, what if it takes place in a summer camp before it opens? And it was like, oh yes. It was it really, a light bulbs went on. So the title just came first and everything sort of grew it, out it, of in that. The, in that particular case, yes it did. How did you end up casting the film? Betsy Palmer, for example. Yeah, and Betsy, <laughs> yeah, my, well now Betsy Palmer was very famous at the time but she was famous as a, you know, as a morning TV host, you know, like Meredith Vieira or, you know, one of these nice people that you could depend on. And if you ever met her, she was a very, very nice person. So our feeling was that if she knocked on the door and, oh, it's Betsy Palmer, <laughs> the audience would say, oh, well, there's nothing to worry about there. And then all of a sudden, then of course you had very quickly. The twist writes itself yeah. in that case, yeah. almost. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we all know that you know the mother ends up being um, the culprit. Um, did, was there always? Did you always have an intention to sort of bring Jason into it, or was Jason just sort of a something that happened completely out of your control? Like all of a sudden, Jason became the thing. Victor had come up with the notion of a Max story. What motivated the mother? And it was the drowning of her young child. Okay. Now, we're going along trying to make the movie, and <clears throat> my investors um, said, you know, I'd really like to get some sort of like, you know, jump at the end. And, um, you know, can you get me a jump at the end? Wouldn't that be great? And I said, yeah, it'd be great. I have to figure out what it would be, but I, I, you know, I don't know. So cut to about two or three days later, and I get a call about, all right, what if she's on the lake and then out of, out of the lake comes this like mongoloid creature and grabs her and pulls her under. I knew for sure that we could get, startle the audience, but we had no idea it was gonna work as spectacularly well as it did, but that's a function of a whole bunch of other things coming together at the right time. Were you, were, were you approached for the sequel or did, did somebody else, was that something that was- No, I did not want to do the sequel, but um, uh, the people that had worked on it with me, it became an opportunity and, and my friend Steve Meyer got to direct the second one and, uh, and finally the third one. And after the years he stepped away, what was it that made you come back with Jason Goes to Hell? Wes had started um, the Nightmare on Elm Street series and, and then he had pulled away. Um, and he didn't want to keep doing that over and over again. And both of the series, you know, had developed sort of their own momentum, but they were just slowing down and they were very predictable. Mm -hmm. And as a producer, I said, Freddy versus Jason. God, <laughs> it's like, that, that sounds like a, a grudge match in Las Vegas. I thought that that would really be a good thing to sell and it could, could invigorate the, the franchises. And luckily for me, Paramount was willing to let the franchise go. They were just grinding them out, but they just didn't like, they just didn't like the series. And so I was able to take that and go to New Line where they had the, the Freddy stuff mm -hmm. and pitch them just the way I did to you. And they said, sounds great, let's do it. And there started almost 10 years of development, of trying to figure out how to take two iconic negative forces and make a movie that's fun to see. But in the meantime, you know, we had to do something and we needed to get, well, let's make another Friday the 13th while we're waiting and developing this other thing. And the new line said, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how, that's how we got to Friday the 13th part nine. And pretty much a replay a few years later, 
where I still wanted to get Freddy versus Jason, and, and New Line just didn't want to do what I wanted to do at the time, and it became, all right, but we're going to have to do something. And uh, we're sitting around the office saying, what the hell are we going to do? <laughs> and, and it became pretty simple. How about Jason in space? Okay. <laughs> So Jason went to space, and that's, uh, that's what he was doing while we while he was getting ready uh, in training for uh, Freddy vs. Jason. And of course, recently there have been remakes of both uh, Friday the Thirteenth and Last House on the Left. What gave you the idea that it was the right time for finally for a remake of both of those? When Friday the Thirteenth uh, got to the point where we had done Freddy vs. Jason, then the question becomes, what do you do next? And what, you're going to bring in Michael Myers, you're going to bring in Pinhead, or, you know, what, what are we going to do? And, and we, really didn't, we really didn't see a way to, to make it grow like, like uh, wrestling might. And uh, Platinum Dunes, who's Michael Bay and, and his company, had an idea for remaking the classics. And wouldn't we like to remake Friday the 13th? And I said, sure. And because this put a whole, whole new spin, a whole new life on it. And fans are definitely going to want to know, is there any film with Jason in the future? Most people know that we were going to go ahead with uh, the 13th of the Friday the 13th uh, theatrical installment. And some problems came up with the rights and whether or not the rights would be available in the future. And if so, who would they be held by? Would they revert back to Victor Miller, the original writer, or would they stay with us and Paramount and Warner Brothers and New Line and other people who had worked on it? Um, it's not an unusual situation. There has to be a solution. I mean, there just has to be a solution. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm very optimistic. And I would say that, well, we're gonna make another theatrical movie first chance we get.